Bless your holy name. We give you glory. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord. You are good all the time. You are good. Now, it's a privilege to have the opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus Christ through the nations of the earth. It's a responsibility that we have no choice but to embrace with stewardship. And for those of us who are given the opportunity to share the word of God, we are continuously challenged by do we open our mouth to please men or do we open our mouth to please God in the first instant? Well, of course, we want to please God in the first instant. And by faith, we want to believe that men likewise will be encouraged. But there's going to always be challenges when the word is being spoken. Now, in such a season like this, as we look through the Bible, in Ezekiel, Ezekiel, especially 34, tells us that those who share the word of God, if they do not share it, then the constituency, the end result of the constituency is upon their, is their responsibility. So the Bible has told us that those of us who share the word, we're going to be judged even more. And so we cannot come before you and at the back of our minds where they are thinking, well, somebody's going to be offended or somebody's going to be challenged. That's not our first line of conversation. We don't want to offend person in the first instant. But in the same breath now, the word of God has to be shared. And then we have to also understand that we, we who are given the opportunity to share the word of God, we cannot live in the realm of if I didn't know. We cannot live in the realm of if I didn't know. I recall visiting an uncommon man of God, oh Father, in my jurisdiction when I was, when I was, um, when I was younger. And he was an uncommon man of God in our jurisdiction. And uh, I, I visited him. And uh, upon about to leave, uh, I took his hands and placed, I went on my knees. I took his hands and placed his hands on my head. And I bequeathed of him, entreat of him to bless me. Was an uncommon man of God, elder gentleman. And in our environment at the time, he's one of the foremost speakers of the word. He blessed me in an uncommon way. Well, a couple of months after, maybe even weeks, but I don't want to exaggerate. A couple of months after, I got to understand that he migrated from the earth realm. What if I was to say, what if I was to say, well, no, he's such a man of God. I won't entreat of him. I will do it another time. It's obvious I would have never gotten an opportunity to have the memories of saying, oh, I was blessed in an uncommon way by this gentleman. Uh, also, in a certain season, had someone who was very a quality human being. And I visited the person, and I took time out to minister the word of God to this person. Now, at the time, the person did not communicate it to me that they had a, a fatal diagnosis. They did not communicate. I just basically flow as the Spirit of God leads me. And so I gave him opportunity to accept Jesus Christ, minister the gospel of God, word of God to him. Of course, it looked like a healthy human being, cheerful as usual. Well, in a certain season, I understand that this gentleman was no more in the earth realm because he exit because of that uncommon disease. Start with the letter C. They call it the big C. What am I saying is that, especially in this season, I cannot come before you and say, okay, I will say X another time. Because we don't know if the rapture will come before that. And it's saying right now, faith comes by hearing the word of God. Okay. The next thing again is that there are some of us, oh Father, if we don't hear, we'll never adjust. Likewise, if we don't hear, sometimes we don't even know how to pray. Sometimes we want to pray, but we want to pray more specifically. And so information from the word of God is so important. So I start with that ground level to say people like us, we, we, we have no choice but to respond to the mandate over our lives. And that's what propels us. And in doing it, of course, it can be quite interesting. And so today, we draw reference from the latter-day statement of Jesus Christ. I, as it was on the eve of leaving the earth realm. As it was on the eve of leaving the earth realm, he sat down, of course, and he responded to questions by his disciples. And so, let's go over to Matthew 24, verses 1 to 3 in the first instant. Matthew 24, verses 1 to 3 in the first instant. And here now, 
Jesus is responding and having a, a dialogue more likely with his disciples. And so they deliver it. This delivery is entitled, When We See or Hear It. Rather, let's do this one. When we see or hear these things. Yeah, the entitlement for this delivery is, is, is when we see or hear these things. Say to somebody, when you see or hear these things. Brothers and sisters, we're in the earth realm for such a time as this. And we have to understand that when we see or when we hear these things, we have a responsibility to be steward of what we hear. Let me start with an uncommon overview. In September 2015, something occurred which I would say change the trajectory of the universe. In September 2015, at the United Nations, the General Assembly adopted, adopted the determination that by year 2030, by year 2030, oh Father, over 17 what we call sustainable developmental goals, which are called SDG goals, or SDGs we call them. So in September, year 2015, the General Assembly agreed, voted on, and most of the countries throughout the nations of the earth would have logged on to the reality that by 2030, year 2030, the, 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 the globe is going to come in alignment with agreed principles, agreed goals, agreeable out outcomes. And of course, it looked innocent, but since then, independent countries, which we call sovereign countries, are no more as sovereign as we think they are. Irrespective of who become the government of these sovereign countries, they have logged on to what I call the playbook of the 2030 agenda. And because, because of that 2030 agenda, you have to understand that most of the things that are being done, they are in alignment with the 2030 agenda. Now, last year, while I was listening to different speakers at the General Assembly at the United Nations, the Secretary General at the time alluded that in some cases, some of these SDG goals, or what we call SDGs, is really sustainable developmental goals. And over 17 of them with different categories. I'm excited about SDG 4 because SDG 4 focuses on education. And what it does is that it's a global imperative for education to be exposed and to have access, person have access to education and to ensure lifelong learning. Glory to God. So I'm excited about SDG 4. And most of my uh, way of going about life is centered around that, encouraging others to access, whereby education will become a priority and a privilege and acceptable, where education become a right, a right. Can you imagine, show the nations of the earth, education becomes a right, a privilege. So, based on these 17 SDG goals, most countries, serving countries, you have over 190, well, you have 193 UN member states. 193 UN member states. You have two states that don't necessarily have voting rights, it's called observer rights, which is basically, well, I won't call the names here. Glory to God, you can look it up. And those 193 UN member, member states, they are together a whole universal population mass of over 7 billion people in the world. It is for me it's now that when the United Nations come and make a decision, they're not representing half of the girl of the world. They're not representing three quarter. They are representing actually, if you're running off the mathematical perspective, you have over you have over um, seven billion people in the world. Oh Father. And if United Nations are representing over seven billion people in the world, it therefore means that these resolutions and agreements impact all of us, whether we agree or not. Impacts all of us, whichever colors you are. And we have to pray for the leaders of the, of the nations of the earth. We have to pray for them because the truth of the matter is our only intercessory prayer can really adjust some perspective. Oh, Father. All right. 
Because at the leadership level, some of these leaders are not necessarily outright, etc. Um, how do I outright? Uh, put it this way: we see them operating contrary to how they grow up. We know we see them go to church. We know them open their mouth and say whisper a prayer. I whisper the national anthem. All right. So we know they've never grew up a certain way. So if they're operating contrary to that, then we know that there's something bigger than their own perspective. And we're coming to understand that it's a global imperative to get everybody lined up on Animal Farm to get a number. I wonder if you have your number already, I don't know. You better go to the post office. Oh, Father. So I start my understanding. When, when I share like this, I have to go before my maker, you know. You think I can go to my maker and say, well, I saw the face. And they look like they would have stoned me. You must be joking. You think I can say to my, my maker, the prime minister seemed like somebody will lock up anybody that oppose him. You must be joking. Oh, Father. Rakasata. No, we share and allow God's people to make decisions according to the word of God. Hallelujah. A man and woman of God has to share the word of God. Because as long as you're connected with God, there's a transformation element of you. You cannot sit down and watch things happen. You cannot sit down and wonder what happened. You have to be the mouthpiece to make things occur, to make things happen. He's there not a cause. Glory to God. So, this delivers entitled, <laughs> when you what? When you see, or hear, these things. When you see, or hear, these things. I wonder what you and I are going to do. I wonder what you and I have been doing. There are these three persons in the world. Those who wonder what happened. Those who don't make nothing happen. And those who make things happen. Our mouth is a creative force. Either for good or for bad. We as born again believers have to take a stance when it comes to the word of God. And we also have to prepare ourselves for eternity. Because at the rate things going, people want us to follow back at them to a devil's hell. Check the nation throughout the earth. What recognizes that? They says democracy. Throughout the nations. So we go to poll and vote. And then after we vote for them, they operate like a totalitarian society. Nobody has no rights except them. Hallelujah. Throughout the nations of the earth. You as a born again believer, you sit down here. Hallelujah. And see so what happens after a while. You become a victim. Somebody has to oppose. Somebody got to speak the word. Somebody got to believe that God is a God of miracles. And God is a God of intervention. Let's go to the scripture. Hallelujah to God. Revelation. Okay. God, why you want to start at Revelation? Why you want to finish the message before it started? Hallelujah. Matthew 24, verses 1 to 3. Reading thus. Verse 1. Jesus departed from the temple area and was going on his way when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to the buildings of the temple and point them out to him. Verse 2. But he answered them, Do you see all these? Truly, I tell you, there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. Verse 3, while he was seated on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately and said, Tell us, when will this take place? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end or the completion, the consummation of the age? And verse 4 now, look at the answer. Verse 4, Jesus answered them, Be careful that no one misleads you. Deceiving you and leading you into error. Oh, my father. So the King James Virgin says, when will you know the end times? 
When will you know the ends, the, the symbols and indicators of the end time? Oh, glory to God. When will you know? Jesus said plainly, you will know when people are looking you in your, in your face, on TV, or eye to eye, and say to you, don't worry about a thing, man. Everything is going to be all right. Okay, I'm your God. Okay, okay. If I say it, all is well. God says, there's a possibility that the end times are around that time when there's deception. There will be deception. Now I want to listen to me carefully and take off the colors and listen to me very carefully. A politician is not going to come and tell us straight up what the thing said. Because you'll be a fool, fool politician. He can lose votes that way. So a politician, a politician role is to, work, is to say to you what you want to hear. All right? But I already come and tell you the end result. The end result will be what? Year 20 what? 30. Year 20? 30. Okay, how many years? How many years leave for that? Six for some. Okay. And if you went to Jamal, yeah, okay, it will be what? Five and a half. So if in five and a half, remember now, the way the thing said, it's not said 2030 come, it's not said New Year's morning, January 1, 2030, and then everything chip in. You see the thing said? You have to be progressive. You have to be what? Progressive. So, Things that you look seem innocent. It's going to be sold like any salesman who's selling fish. Hallelujah. Where I'm from, I've never heard a fisherman pass and sell steel fish, steel fish, steel fish. Where I'm from, they ride bicycle and they say, fresh fish, fresh fish, fresh fish. Okay. You see them in the morning, and when I go to school and come back, oh, Father, I'll pass them in the community. All I'm hearing is what? Fresh fish, fresh fish, fresh fish. Hallelujah. Okay. Some up where I'm from, they, work, they ride donkey. And you know, say donkey is slow. Hallelujah. Uh, and it's not said so the amper has water in it to keep the fresh and fresh. All we keep hearing is fresh fish, fresh fish, fresh fish. That's where I'm from. Hallelujah. So you're going to be told that it's fresh fish, fresh fish, fresh fish. And it's good for your, for your, for your body and, and the world works. Hallelujah. But who is going to tell you that some of these fishes have been bombed? Oh, Rokosata. Rabakasata. Hallelujah. So the Bible is saying, when you see deception, turn up. And I want to take out the colors because whichever country you're in, oh, Father, if you are connected, those in Senate is one playbook, those in Congress is one playbook. Those are in the commonwealth, those in parliament, upper, upper house, and lower house is one playbook. Everybody have to line up, hallelujah, behind mother N by 2030. Okay, if you don't believe me, let somebody say, no, ludicrous, we will not. And you will see what happened. You will see who is sovereign from who is not sovereign. <laughs> Check the news. Anybody over the last couple years saying we're not lining up? Any statement come across for them? All right. So you have to pray that whichever country you're in, you have to pray that God become the God of that country. If God, if God don't become the God of that country, then somebody else is ruling the leadership them head. Is that a God or, or otherwise? Okay, now. So the Bible says that when the righteous rule, then people are at peace and the people rejoice. All right, and I can tell you about country in whether opposition or, or leadership, all of them logging on on the playbook. Okay, so it's not about colors, oh Father, it's about the reality. The Bible says, Jesus says, the end time is when you see deception, deception turn up. Glory to God. Last summer, I came and I took the mic, I made statement, people laugh at me. Oh Father, they laugh at me. I proceed my statement by saying, I, I, you know, let me just proceed my statement. Of, I brought to the attention that there's a possibility that something will be signed. I was talking to somebody in Guyana. He laughed at me. And he said, Professor Christian, no, man. Any country we know will not sign it. Is that country there? 
that have the fastest runner at a certain time. Lord, I said, listen to me now. You, I said, listen to me. Things and, things and time change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They said, no, Professor Christian. We know said, that country that cannot go down in that country. I talked to somebody from Antigua and Barbuda, and he brought up the same scenario. He said, Professor Christian, I know. I can tell you straight up. If it's one country we know we're not sign on, and that is that country. Oh, Father. Oh, Father, we love to dance. Oh, Father, now they just they start to juggle and uh, 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 also. Hallelujah. I said, listen to me. You better listen to me. Hallelujah. You have to understand what's going down. Okay. I talked to somebody in Robocosa, in St. Martin's. And for some reason, the conversation came up. Because it was a hot topic at the same, at the, in the region. And I said, Professor Christian, we can tell us straight up. If it's one country we know that will not sign on. Hallelujah. It's that country. Oh, that country that is always leading the region. I said, listen to me. I never born big. As well me big now. I've been around long enough to know. To understand how this thing set. They laugh after me. And, 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 and what was so embarrassing. A man of God said to me. The, um, and Professor Christian. Isn't, isn't that country a sovereign country? How dare you tell me. That, there's a, that they, they might sign on on it. How dare you? And that's a sovereign country. I said, listen to me now. First time days, and it's a day, two different days. Mm -hmm. I was raised up. Oh, Father, like how some of you want to raise me up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that was last summer, and I came before you, and I told you that there is a, there is a, there is a, there is a thing called a Samoa Agreement. I, I came before you bearing information. Hallelujah. And people laugh. Hallelujah. While some people, you know, some people have to make calls. I said, the said, Hallelujah. And the list goes on. Oh, Father. And I said, okay, we have to watch this thing. Okay, now we have to pray now the whole works and thing. Hallelujah. Hear this now. Glory to God. When the, poli when the political director, oh, my God. When the political director were confronted about the thing, because within the Samoa agreement, you have a thing called productive rights. Reproductive rights. All right? And when I tried to get the document offline, I think it was in French or Belgium or whatever. I, 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 I never know where to open to, to really study it as I wanted to. All right? But from it now, you have a thing called call now the productive soup, the productive rights. Hallelujah. You know what that is saying? It is saying, hallelujah, hallelujah, that what you think you used to go down 10, 20 years ago, where you grew up, those days are, they are suggesting that if you sign on on the summer agreement, the countries in the Caribbean, the Pacific and African countries, if they sign on on it, for the next 20 years, you have to do what Bakra Master tell you to do. That's number one. Number two, the values that you and I know about, hallelujah, including, and I give you the, 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 the demonstration recently, how, how your family is going to increase. Oh, Father, that is in it. Huh. So they're going to push her through the school system sooner or later. They're going to push her through the justice system sooner or later. Hallelujah. When the representative was confronted, oh Father, it was said publicly. You know what was said publicly? We will not sign on. And this was the operative sta um, statement. And I was fooled by it. They said, we will not sign on. And there was a pause. And he said, at this time. We will not sign on at this time. All right, people like me turn fool, fool, and believe that God has intervened and God, hallelujah. Couple of days after, weeks after, so on, we understand that somebody signed on behalf of a country. Rakasaka. <laughs> For the next 20 years, I could preach till thy kingdom come. Sooner or later, you're going to hear some, it is yet speech. <laughs> Sooner or later, I'm going to look at a man, oh father, with muscular something. Hallelujah. I'm going to say, man, come to the altar. And the person going to tell you straight up and say, I'm going to sue you because I'm not a man. <laughs> For the next 20 years, we lock up in on that. The average person don't know that. And those in a parliament, you know, here, if, if, if it was opposed by the opposition, the, 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 the main media don't carry it. So I have to conclude that everybody lock up in it one way or the other. <laughs> so what? We must sit down. 
on an animal farm. Okay, like a rocking dolly. I said, okay, go ahead. For the next 20 years, anything you do, we go things so we trust you. I'm saying, <laughs> time has changed. And here is now, this is going to break your heart. You're a bonus political representative on both sides. I'm changed too. The math is good, you know. But they have a playbook. And you, you in the church, you're not in the church. Most of these, most of these laws and principles that is coming on. When you look at it and you read through it, you recognize it coming straight against those who log on on Jesus Christ. Okay. All this, all this plan to change constitution and so on. There's no intention to make more God in it. I've, I've listened to town halls and so on. And most of these things end up becoming questions are asked based on what council should do and so on. These things are things. The intention, rakasaka, is to change. Hallelujah. And to adjust to come in alignment with the 2030 agenda. So those that you are born certain colors, the medias they're done with. <laughs> a young man said, he will never marry a woman. Hallelujah to God. Unless she go sleep in a certain colors. Hallelujah. If she not sleep in a certain colors, she can't stay in the house. I wish you all the best. You know, color she can go to a devil's hell. So whichever colors we are, throughout the nations, the earth, at the end of the day, we have to see what the word of God is saying. And we should not be timid when some of these things oppose the word of God. We should not be timid to confront those who are rebuilding us, gods. And I put it to you, they're going to tell us straight up and say, no man, don't worry about that thing. Everything is going to be all right. Straight down to hell. Let's run, let's, let's, you know something. <laughs> Who troubled me today? <laughs> Nobody troubled me, man. We're just talking the truth and nothing but the truth. So help me, God. Say amen. amen. Glory to God. Zoom, zoom me up, zoom me up. Let me hear up, zoom. Oh, yes, yeah, zoom. But no, no, zoom. We have your hands for zoom. We have your hands for zoom. Zoom, we love you. We love you, zoom. We love you, we love you, we love you. We love you so much. We cannot have church without you. Hallelujah. Yes, YouTube, we love you. Put your hands together for YouTube and Facebook. Come on, we love them. We lo come on, come on, come on. All right, glory to God. So verse 4, you know, read verse 4 again. <laughs> Matthew 24, verse 4. <laughs> you read it one more time. Verse, we, yeah, go ahead. Verse 4. Jesus answered them, Be careful that no one misleads you, deceiving you, and leading you into error. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, clear, glory to God. And then now in verse 8, Jesus continues the discourse, even before verse 8. And in verse 8 now, in, in, in concert with verse 4, take heed that nobody deceive you. In verse 8, look what Jesus is saying to the disciples, as he's saying to us. Verse 8, all this is but the beginning, the early pains of, birth, of the birth pangs of the intolerable anguish. One more Verse 8, all this is but the beginning, the early pains of the birth pangs of the intolerable anguish. Boy, intolerable anguish. Glory to God. Boy, I tell you, man, I just went through anguish a while ago. If you have something against me, just tell me straight up, man. But don't harass me publicly. Just say, if you want to go to heaven, just tell me straight up. All of you just look out the demon out there, that's all. <laughs> Glory to God. I had to turn to white to tell I'm very pure and virginous. Hallelujah to God. Let's flow now. So Jesus, so in verse 8, continues and says, All these things are the beginning of sorrows. You stay there. Hallelujah. What you see happening? You think you see anything yet? <laughs> It just pangs. These are just sorrows. You see, say it yet. Throughout the nations of earth, you think you see anything yet? 
Glory to God. We're talking about, you know, when you see or hear these things, ha, you better decide how you're going to operate in the, in the dark realm. All right? And when I touch a politics part, now people get upset. I'm just trying to save you from killing off yourself. If you're a politician, that's all I'm trying to do. And I say I must change your colors. Where you live, if you change your colors, they will bomb up your house. But I'm saying, for God's sake, at least you know how to pray for, you, for your gods. You know how to pray for the leaders. You know how to pray to say, okay, God, give them wisdom. Yes, give them wisdom. Give them knowledge. Yes, you, you, you get to learn how to pray that, that, that they will be saved and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Because if Jesus is not the Lord, then somebody else is the Lord. I wonder who is the Lord. I've learned that people going to church alone, that doesn't cut it. That's why they're using to fool us. Hallelujah to God. Let's flow. Rakasata. So in verse 12 now, of Matthew 24, verses 12 to 14. Look how Jesus continues the overview. Matthew 24, verses 12 to 14, reading thus. Verse 12. And the love of the great body of people will grow cold because of the multiplied lawlessness and iniquity. Verse 13. But he who endures to the end will be saved. Oh, glory to God. So the previous scripture is saying, oh, because of iniquity. Let's go over to Romans 1. Let's go over to Romans 1, verse 27 onwards. Because of iniquity, <laughs> it is said that the <laughs> love of people, many shall be waxed cold. Because of what? Iniquity. Because of what? Iniquity. The love of many will wax cold. Lord, because of what? Iniquity. I don't know where you're going to drive in your country or after church is over, whichever church you're in. Because of iniquity, some road lock off. Rakashanda <clears throat> Rabasata. Hallelujah. I wish you all the best. And those of you who are not really saved, you better stay at church with me until 5 o'clock. Because if you ever go on the road, you're going to backslide immediately. Because all you're going to see is leg, breast, and ties. I was laughing to myself. You know, I laugh at myself nowadays. Hallelujah. You go into an office, you look at a lady, oh, father, oh, father, with, with appreciation. Oh, father, they report you for sexual abuse or uh, harassment. Oh, father, oh, especially in the corporate world. But an idea like this is the very same corporate executive. Hallelujah. My father, not even string. Not even string. What, what are you laughing about? I'm, I'm testing, I'm making sure there's a mic card. What, 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 what is it? You know, it's a my card. Don't you see it's a my card? Is, a, is this a my card? Then why you think? Why you think? Why? You didn't see what I did? You didn't see what I did? It's a my card. Oh, why would I do otherwise? Why would I do otherwise? You see them in the corporate world. But on a day like this, oh Jesus of mercy. Because of iniquity. Place yes, yes, yes. lack off. <laughs> I want to wish they, they're going to lack off for God to be praised. And God to be worshipped. I want to wish they. But we're not waiting on the lack off for God to be praised. Because there's a thing called a rapture. And I'm convinced of the way things are going. God has to take the remnant out of this wicked, crude, Callous, fleshly, and sensual, and anti-God world. And I'm first, I'm taking the first flight. The first flight. Hout. Rakashaka. Mando Robosata. Romans 1, verses 27. Oh, Father, turn appointed verse. Look at the cross reference. So because of iniquity shall be bound. And the love of many shall walk school. Look at Romans 1 verse 27 onwards. What's it saying? 
verse 27. And the men also turned from natural relations with women and were set ablaze, burning out, consumed with lust for one another. Men committing shameful acts with men and suffering in their bodies and personalities the inevitable consequences and penalty for their wrongdoing and going astray, which was their fitting retribution. Flow to 32. Verse 28. And so, since they did, did not see fit to acknowledge God or approve of him or consider him worth the knowing, God gave them over to a base and condemned mind to do things not proper or decent but loathsome. Verse 29. Until they were filled permeated and saturated with every kind of unrighteousness, iniquity, grasping, and covetous greed and malice. They were full of envy and jealousy, murder, strife, deceit, and treachery, ill will and cruel ways. They were, they were secret backbiters and gossipers. Verse 30. Slanderers, Hateful to and hating God, full of insolence, arrogance, and boasting, inventors of new forms of evil, disobedient and undutiful to parents. Verse 31. They were without understanding, conscienceless and faithless, heartless and loveless and merciless. Verse 32. Though they were fully aware of God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve to die, they not only do them themselves, but approve and applaud others who practice them. Oh, glory to God. Let's go to verse 32. Look how human beings in the earth realm has become bare face. They have become bare face to the point now that God is saying they know right. They know what to do. But they have chosen to do otherwise deliberately. Yes. Let's read verse 32 one more time. Glory to God. Verse 32. And, and you see how human beings, hallelujah, not human beings who died, are human beings who are going to be buried. We're talking about human beings that you and I are interacting with in the earth realm. Look what God is saying that they have chosen. Nobody forced them to operate this way now. They have deliberately chosen to say that the sovereign God, hallelujah, is not their God. And the suffering God has no right to tell them what to do with their bodies. Read 32 for me, please. Verse 32. Though they were fully aware of God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve to die, they not only do them themselves, but approve and applaud others who practice them. Oh, no, 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 so the thing said nowadays, no, so everybody preaching, everybody preaching. That you should do what you want to do. And when person what they want to do, there are persons that stand cheering you on. There are persons creating laws to make sure that anybody tell you about the word of God. They will charge them by hate speech. Oh, oh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Yes. But God's, you know, you know, God is a loving God, you know. God is a loving God. But there comes a time when God himself said enough is enough. Enough is enough. And I don't know about you, but, we, but, but based on what I'm seeing, I, I want to know what's the difference between our generation and the generation of Sodom and Gomorrah. You, you, you tell me, what is in fact, I put it to you, that it didn't turn up since Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh, oh, why do I say that? Because they never have internet in a Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> oh, yes, no, they never have blue movie. Oh, Father, video tape in Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh, glory to God. And they never have certain magazine. Hallelujah. Thousands a year in Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh, glory. You think turn up? You think turn up? And I brought the revelation that if God never saved Lot out of Sodom and Gomorrah, there's a possibility that Jesus' bloodline could not have continued. The Jesus who came to save us, there's a possibility that he would not be birthed the way he was birthed. Because his bloodline would have been cut off through Lot. 
So tell me, I put it to you that this day and age globally, Mwasia, hallelujah, than Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We saw Wasi. Hallelujah. That we not hide. Rokosa. We not hiding. Oh. We saw Wasi. Hallelujah. That we put it right up in anybody's face, including children. Hallelujah. So you tell me now. Hallelujah. The God we serve. Are you saying that God has to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah? If you don't deal with this generation. Yeah? Hallelujah. Even if God never wants to deal with this generation. He has to do it. Hallelujah. Why he has to do it? Because in Genesis the Bible tells us. When the angels cohabitate with man. Oh father. I end up spoiling. Oh father the population. God himself wiped them out. Hallelujah. God said I regretted. I regretted making man. I repented making man. So God wiped them out already. And based on what's going on now, I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. Glory to God. God has to do something. From man to bow. Rakashaka. God has to do something. Rakasha. For the bells. Hallelujah. For the iniquity worker. And the Assyria prophets. And the Baal prophets. To bite the dust. In this day and age. The sovereign God. Has to do something. Against the king Heab. That I rule with high and fist. Throughout the nations of the earth. And I'm discovering. If there's a king Heab. There must be a Jezebel. There must. And I believe. I believe. I believe. That man heart not so wicked. There has to be a Jezebel. In the ears of a king Heab. Rakasha. And I look through the nations of the earth and I'm convinced that these king Arabs have a Jezebel talking to them. I'm convinced that there are aliens in the earth realm. I am convinced because no normal human beings doing the things that we're doing in this day and age. Rakasata. So I put it to you, hallelujah, that whether, whether you want to believe it or not, God himself, the sovereign God, hallelujah, will not continue to put up with the stench that is rising up from the nations of the earth. Sooner or later, rakasa, man will have to bow. King Herod says, the people, the people applauded King Herod, um, King, King, King Herod, and said, yeah, the real deal. King Herod, you are a God. Oh, Father. And King Herod, oh, God swell-headed. And the Bible said, instantly, worm ate him. Glory to God. Nebuchadnezzar said, look at Babylon that I have built. <laughs> you know, so the things said, the nations are hurt. Lead us now more so well. Let, let's, let's work together with God. Lead us, I know, saying, look at my legacy. <laughs> Some of them dead and gone already. Some of these presidents and prime ministers, them dead and gone already. And them leave their, 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 um, their legacy. You know, when the legacy that they have left in the islands, oh, Father, it's for us to be tribal. Tribal. You live on one lane. Hallelujah. And we are cousin. <laughs> oh, this cousin thing come up again. Right now. And we are one family. Oh, Father. Same father's side. Different mother's side. Who all works. Okay, we live in a one lane. The other lane is about 200 yards on the road. Hallelujah. And me as family member cannot go over the other lane. Oh, Father, why? Because the paint that lane a certain color. Raka shaka. Hallelujah. And we know, how not take nobody from this. So, even though we are all family members, that is the legacy. Our four parents and politicians leave us a tribal country. That Family against family. Hallelujah. When people like me talk like this, people upset because I want to continue them tribe. Hallelujah. The tribal behavior. But I come to say at the foot of the cross, we are one before Jesus Christ. 
Colors are no colors. There comes a time in a society. There comes a time in a nation that God's people have to stand up and say, my brother, you have a certain color. My sister, you have a certain color. My brother, you have a certain color. But hand in hand, we're going forward together, man. And then we're going for to build our community and build our nation. We're going to stop kill off each other. <laughs> Check the statistic. <laughs> How many president children died in the inner city? Or in the boroughs? How many, How many prime ministers and opposition family members died because they were on they were on, on bus and truck going to what you call them? Political rally. How many? Who are the ones dying? Who are the ones getting broke foot? Who are the ones getting shot? Raka. Those on animal farm who is falling back at them gods. When I talk like this, people quench up in a seat. You don't hear nothing yet. Raka shakata. I so said, when you see or hear these things, you better decide what you want to do, you know. Because soon I'm going to reach your doorstep. <laughs> soon or later I'm going to reach your yard. Soon or later I'm going to reach your workplace. They're going to come and tell me to go to your workplace. Oh, Jesus, have mercy. You better press your party to win back. Rakasa. <laughs> because there's some government entity. If another party win, you go back. There's nowhere the following morning. You have a job there. The, the thing turned tribal. Everybody turned tribal. Fury time, no. Oh, Father, tomorrow, fear your time. Can a country run upon that? But you're running upon that. Because somebody take us for idiot. Because they know so we're going to vote back for them. Let's flow. Raka Sata. Let's flow. Let's go to Leviticus 18. Let's go to Leviticus 18. Verses 1 to 5 in the first instant. We're talking about when we see or hear these things. When we see or hear these things. Oh, glory to God. When we see or hear these things. I hear now God is getting, God is telling us straight up. Hallelujah. He says straight up. Glory to God. It's either we connecting as a nation with this true and living God. Or otherwise, there's no way as a nation or the nation to the earth you connect to God and you behave a certain way. Leave the cost verses 1 to 5, reading thus. Verse 1. And the Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, I am the Lord your God. You shall not do as was done in the land of Egypt in which you dwelt, nor shall you do as is done in the land of Canaan, to which I am bringing you, to which I am bringing you. Neither shall you walk in their statutes. Verse 4. You shall do my ordinances and keep my statutes and walk in them. I am the Lord your God. Verse 5. You shall therefore keep my statutes and my ordinances, which... If a man does, he shall live by them. I am the Lord. Oh, that is self-explanatory. Let's go to verse 21. Glory to God. That is self-explanatory. God is telling us straight up. As long as you log on on me, you cannot operate otherwise. So look to the nations of the earth and see which country really log on upon God. Stop fooling yourself that the country in is, 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 is serving God. Because by your fruits, you shall know them. Glory to God. If you're not country and God is the God of that country, then we should be able to pre preach a gospel in season and out of season. Now say it go. Oh, about Sata. But if it's the thing set now, turn up a school, but you're going to have devotion. <laughs> Read verse 21. Verse 21. You shall not give any of your children to pass through the fire and sacrifice them to Molech, the fire god. Nor shall you profane the name of your God by giving it to false gods. I am the Lord. Oh, glory to God. God is saying to me, 
Hallelujah. When I'm the God of a country, glory to God. You, 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 you cannot participate by bringing the children of that country and pass them through the fire. Or bring them as sacrifices to the God of Moleks. Glory to God. You check the country you are in, whichever country in the nations there are. There are some countries that have legalized abortion. Okay, what does that mean? Abortion and demand is basically putting the children, putting the fetus them, oh father, passing them through the fire. That's what we call sacrilege. That's what we call, when the, when the abortions occur, then the human being become an altar to attract the demonic. Oh father, you interview any person who have gone through abortion situation and I will tell you over the years, Oh, they suffer anger issue. Oh, they suffer relationship issue. How oh, they live with guilt. And how oh, they sometimes hear the child who wasn't born as yet crying and calling out the name. They lived a life of regret. Hallelujah. But their nations showed the hurt. Hallelujah. Who have said, we legalize it. You can't talk about it. We legalize it to pass your children them through the fire. I wonder if you're in any country where the children are missing and cannot be found. I wonder where they are. I wonder if they're around the fire. Are they already gone through the fire? Uh -huh. God said when you're in a country like that, then that country is abomination upon abomination upon abomination. And somebody got to open them out and say enough is enough. For the children's sake, we cannot allow our children to be passed through the fire. Verse 28 and 30. And I'll come off of this line. Glory to God. Luther, I'm saying Leviticus 18. Verses 28 to 30. And I'm talking like this, you know. Because we live in a world where people are saying, I'm one big woman. I'm a one big man. I can do whatever with my body. The question is, who made your body? <laughs> you tell me. You tell me. If, if one of the parts break off of your body, <laughs> Tell me, can you, can you remake the parts? Glory to God. I've heard of persons who may have gotten broken limbs and so on. And they went to the doctor. And the doctor then put in screws and so on. And at first they look okay. But the excruciating pain that they go through over life is no fun. So who's going to replace your limb with, with, with a perfect limb? It has to be the sovereign God. So you can't tell me. You can do anything with your own body. You are your own big woman. I am your own big man. Then who made you? And that's why God is upset. And God is saying that any one of his children, oh Father, to the nations of the earth, say that they connect with him. They cannot be involved in these type of activities. Say amen. amen. Verses 28 to 20 and to 30. Verse 28. Do none of these things, lest the land spew you out when you defile it. As it spewed out the nation that was before you. Verse 29. Whoever commits any of these abominations shall be cut off from among his people. Verse 30. So keep my charge. Do not practice any of these abominable customs which were practiced before you and defile yourselves by them. I am the Lord your God. Oh, Jesus, have mercy. So God is saying, my, my brothers and sisters, whichever nation you're in, do not be comfortable if your nation is associating with these practices because these practices were not given to them by God. And God is saying for those nations that are providing the environment for these practices, then God himself in due season will give them a reward. Oh, Jesus, have mercy. Rakasata. What concerns me you now is that some of us in some of these countries, hallelujah, and if tree brought down, it goes to stop us from being able to drive to school. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. So whatever happened to the nation, there's a possibility that it's going to affect us too. Oh, glory to God. It's going to affect us too. 
Some say instead of us being reactive, let us be proactive, no man. Let's preach a word in season, no man. And out of season, man. So righteousness exalts a nation. And sin is our approach to any nation. We cannot sit down like this and say, all is well. Oh, glory to God. We cannot sit down like this. Because when you see these things and you hear these things, then you know it was not yesterday. It was not mean all the while. But in this season, the thing turn up. It thing get wassy. Thing come into public. Dirty laundry come into public. I wonder why them quicker to put in these laws. Elkota, Rabaka, Sata. But I got news of somebody. Jesus Christ is coming back. It may be morning, noon or night. You better get rapture ready. Because when you see these things, when you see deception in the land, when you see people operating as if them the best thing since sliced bread, you better look for deception. We don't plan to go to a devil's hell with these persons because God is a refuge and strength, a present help in the time of trouble. Glory to God. Glory to God. In times like these, you got to lift up your eyes to the hill whence cometh your help. Your help coming from the Lord that made heaven and earth. You cannot look to man in this season. The very person who say you, you are them friend. The very person that will watch your back. The very person that will take care of your family. I tell you as soon as you kick the bucket, them see one rub out the insurance money. Oh, glory to God. We live in a wicked world, a vile world. Oh, glory to God. The heart of man is very, very wicked. Oh, glory to God. I say, this season, we got to continue to look up to the hills. Whence cometh our help? Our help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. I say, when you see these things and you hear these things, you got to prepare yourself because something is going to crash and something is going to happen. Pen. When man said they're the own God, the God we serve is a jealous God. He said, I am a jealous God. Give my glory to no other. Oh, Jesus, we have some people they are giving the glory to AI. Rabaka Sata. They're giving the glory. Too much loan one can get. It's still probably gone to. All your prosperity is determined by how much loan you can get. Raka, look where we gone to. Where I'm from, your prosperity is determined by how much bank I am. You can plant and you can sell and you can get return on. But the way the thing set, the more we borrow, that's what we call prosperity. I got news for you. Rocco Sata in this season. I encourage you as I encourage myself to look up to the hills. When's come to our help? Yeah, some people said it's some people say a time now. Rocco Sata. Some people say a time now. But the question is, what you bringing different? Rocco Sata. For some people, you're gonna jump out a frying pan and end up in a fire. I saw the thing set everywhere you turn, man, are, man is failure. Raka, everywhere you turn, human beings are failure. Only one, only one, only one sovereign one that doesn't fail is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. If he says it, that second it, he said, wealth and riches shall be in your house. If you serve in spirit and in truth, he says, I'm the good shepherd. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. He's a super abundant God. He's the God who parted the Red Sea. He's the God who parted River Jordan. He's the God who allowed mountains to bite the dust and become valleys and plain. That's the God we're locking on in this season. That's the God God be voting for in this season. And if you don't vote for him, he's still God. <laughs> What I love about God is not first past the post God. Hallelujah. Whether you turn a yard, are you, are you, are you go to polling station or not, that don't make a difference with God. How do you vote to God? You respond to Romans 10, verses 9 and 10. You got to confess with your heart. Believe with your heart. Confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's how you vote for him. And when you log on to him, then he bring you to a path 
daughter of transformation. I say in this wretched world, you got to log on to the king of kings. You got to log on to the king of kings. You got to log on to the sovereign God. Oh, glory to God. When you log on to the sovereign God, during the famine, you will not be put to shame. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah to God. He will supply all your needs according to your riches is riches in glory through Christ Jesus. We serve a God who never fail. We serve a God who never fail. He never fail. He never fail. Listen, right? I say, He never fails me yet. He never fails me yet. Everywhere I go, I want the world to know He never failed me yet. He never failed me yet. The counselor failed me. Rakashaka. But God never failed you yet. Rabab MP might fail you. But God never failed you yet. Oh, glory to God. Hear this now. Hear this now. The counselor. Hallelujah. Hear this now. The counselor might respond to you. Give him credit. But question is, how much time he can do that? If he ever respond to you four times, the rest in the constituency say favoritism. Hey, the MP, oh, can give you a blight and set up things for you. Oh, can do it one time, two times. If you are female and you do it a third time, then you got to tell the wife, say, I'm a woman out of the road. Hallelujah to God. But if Jesus, when you go to Jesus and you call the telephone, call one 800 J-E-S-U-S Call him up Tell him what you need Tell him what you need right now You tell him what you need in January 2024 He said don't worry about a thing Everything is going to be alright Still February February chips in And you call him up What's the number 1800 J-E-S-U-S school bell ring your Jesus answers I said this is my privilege it's a joy because if even men in Matthew 7 11 knows how to give good gifts how much more I man will give you more than you can even ask think or even imagine so you're asking for a motor vehicle rock I hear this now when the motor vehicle turn up it turn up with the comprehensive insurer it turn up with a full tank full tank if come up with spear he come with warranty that's how the lord does it hey, hey what a season to log on your man is fallible man will feel you the, the nebuchadnezzars will feel you the king errors will feel you Rakas, I hear this now. Man, no robo sata. The Judas is carried that you're eating with. The Judas is carried that you're worshiping God with. The Judas is carried that is with you is the very same one who is going to sell you out for not even silver. Rakasa, you know they're going to sell you out. They're going to sell you out with Jamaican dollars. You know what that mean? It means that there's no value on you. You Jamaican dollar, not even worth anything. Word, why won't somebody sell you out, man? Let them sell you out in US dollar. Let them sell you out with pounds. Let them sell you out with EC. But Jesus, man, Jamaican dollar. No, sir, that disrespectful, man. But whether them sell you out or not, I got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. In this wretched world, oh Jesus, Jesus is showing up strong and mighty and powerful. Say, receive. receive. Glory to God. <laughs> Let's bring down this delivery. Let's go to Revelation 13. Glory to God. When we see these things, <laughs> when you see or hear these things, <laughs> I wonder what you're going to do. I wonder what you're doing now. I wonder what you're going to do next week. <laughs> next week, school start back. <laughs> Tomorrow? A good thing today is the first day. Hallelujah. A good thing today is the first day. And more supermarket clothes. Rakasaka. You won't, you won't find out. Hallelujah. The prayer we in until tomorrow morning. You go to the supermarket. <laughs> What are you going to buy? Oh, for lunch and snack for your children. That is when you will know what type of <laughs> prayer we in. 
<laughs> you better press the insurance policy. Hallelujah. Not up this week. <laughs> Robo. You better press the GPS. Hallelujah. Don't lock off your light this week. You better pray that water commission. Don't send somebody up here to come check your meter. <laughs> that is when you're going to know who, who you serve, who is God. Hallelujah. I give God thanks. I have every confidence that everything is going to be all right. Because you serve the super abundant God. <laughs> now, let's, let's close down with a reality check. <laughs> it happening under your nose and my nose. In fact, the way things set now, you're not even under the nose anymore. It's right on top of the nose. Right in our eyes. In a this rock that you live in. Those on YouTube, <laughs> those on Facebook, those on Zoom, you know the thing set. It already broke off in your jurisdiction. <laughs> it broke off till you can't even say amen. If you say amen too much, Homeland Security come and look for you. <laughs> So on the rock now, look what's going on on the rock. Revelation 13, glory to God. Read from verse 1 to appointed verse. Glory. Let me give you the backdrop. <laughs> Hallelujah. Reading thus. Verse 1. As I stood on the sandy beach, I saw a beast coming up out of the sea with ten horns and seven heads. On his horns, he had ten royal crowns or diadems and blasphemous titles, names, that is, on his heads. Verse 2. And the beast that I saw resembled a leopard, but his feet were like those of a bear, and his mouth was like that of a lion. And to him the dragon gave his own might and power, and his own throne and great dominion. Verse 3. And one of his heads seemed to have a deadly wound, but his death stroke was healed. And the whole earth went after the beast in amazement and admiration. Verse 4. They fell down and paid homage to the dragon because he had bestowed on the beast all his dominion and authority. They also praised and worshipped the beast, exclaiming, who is a match for the beast? And who can make war against him? Verse 5. And the beast was given the power of speech, uttering boastful and blasphemous words. And he was given freedom to exert his authority and to exercise his will during 42 months. That is, three and a half years. Verse 6. And he opened his mouth to speak slanders against God, blaspheming, blaspheming his name and his abode, even vilifying those who live in heaven. Verse 7. He was further permitted to wage war on God's holy people, the saints, and to overcome them. And power was given to him to extend his authority over every tribe and people and tongue and nation. Verse 8. And all the inhabitants of the earth will fall down in adoration and pay him homage, everyone whose name has not been recorded in the book of life of the Lamb that was slain in sacrifice from the foundation of the world. Verse 9. If anyone is able to hear, let him listen. Verse 10. Whoever leads into captivity will himself go into captivity. If anyone slays with a sword, with a sword must he be slain. Herein is the call for the patience and the faith and fidelity of the saints, that is, God's people. Glory to God. As we move on to verse 11, to verse 15. You have to understand the preceding scripture, which is a reality check for all of us. Now, a couple years ago, we would never imagine that this proposed intent could be a reality in our generation. A couple years ago, this proposed intent 
declared thousands of years ago on the inspiration of the uncommon sovereign God we serve. To John the Revelator, who was on the island of Patmos. We wouldn't have known in this season that such proclamation has the possibility to manifest in our generation. Oh, retard. But a few years ago, we saw evidence. We saw wherein it can really happen. We saw wherein that when the world was locked down, we're talking about a, a matter that whether you were in a temperate zone or whether you were in the tropics, it was detailed that one band aid fixed all. Irrespective of who you are, it was mandated that throughout the nations of the earth, all person animal farm has to do what was told. And most borders, if not all, were closed. Which means that there's a prototype of it manifesting in the earth realm. The, the 193 UN member state, it covers over 133.41 million kilometers, square kilometer, or square, yeah, square kilometers. And of course, we represent over 7.93 billion people. Which means with such an uncommon reach, we have seen now where there's evidence where there's a possibility that even though you think that you're in your own backyard, in fact, what is happening is that everyone is being lined up for one global economy, one global lifestyle, and directive from one source. It's not a figmentation of imagination anymore. Because by 2030, the 2030 agenda is to get everybody on animal fall to talk the same language and respond to the same thing. I was wondering in a certain country, or in more than one country, why so many, why so much money is being spent on security? To build new prisons and to invest and to expand the security forces. Throughout the nation, if you check most of the countries, that's what they're doing globally. Because they know something that we don't know. They know that this order is coming. And they also know that human beings will rebel at first. Human beings' nature is to rebel at first. But after a while, like animal farm, people just settle down and just work with it. So I'm realizing now that the, the stage is being set. And when you see these things and hear these things, then God's prophetic word that a beast will come. And God's prophetic word that the dragon will influence this beast. I am realizing it's not far-fetched. Because the Bible talks about the, the apostate church. And I, I wouldn't have believed it if I never see it or hear it in my own ears. When I see persons in the church system covering over much millions of quote-unquote church people, and they are proclaiming that what's in the Bible is no more what we should work with. It's what they think or what they wake up and say should happen. Then I'm getting, I'm getting understanding that man will wake up tomorrow morning and change a man that there's a true and living God. Oh, glory to God. Which means now that we're in this season and the preparation for the man of perdition and the beast. Influenced by the dragon to manifest more fulsome. But in the meantime, the systems are put in place. Now, brothers and sisters, are we going to wait until we reach a stage where we say, if we didn't know? When, when we see these things and hear these things, then we know that something is up to something. And the last pandemic, billions and trillions of dollars were, 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 were spent. My little knowledge about businesses, you're not investing so much money into something that you're not going to do again. Oh, that's deep. That's deep. Hallelujah. Is it the next time? Is it the next round? When, 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 when animal farm locked down? Nobody can say the things has not been tried, you know. <laughs> because the first round, we were guinea pigs and cows and hogs and horses. Anything come to us. <laughs> Nobody not take responsibility. When you're dead, you're just dead. They just train one hole and bury you without a marker. That's how they do things on animal farm. You see the next round? When them lock down, 
Hallelujah to God. You think you can say, well, you're not taking X because it's not tried? They're going to say they tried it and your, and your parents were dead off already. I realize that they kill them off at around a certain time. And we plan to kill you off before the rapture. Wow. <laughs> Look where we're going to. Human beings are the bottom of the chain of, of, of value. So, let's read verse 17 to 18. I was going to, you know, let's, let's do verse 16. Let's do verse 16. Verse 16. Also, he compels all alike, both small and great, both the rich and the poor, both free and slave, to be marked with an inscription stamped on their right hands or on their foreheads. <laughs> say after me, when we see, I hear these things. Oh, glory to God. I, I, we normally see these in the movies. I wonder if they're still in the movies. I wonder if it's a figmentation of our mind. The previous verse says, those who do not worship the beast shall die. Hear this now. Let me do a poll. Let me do a poll. If you and I know who is the beast in this day and age, then all of us are not, 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 not going to bow down. We're not going to serve. Not true. Don't put up your hand. I agree that we're not going to bow down. And we're not going to serve him. And we all agree. Don't you agree? Yeah, man, don't put up your hand, you know. So, so do you know what you're really saying? We already know so we go die. Oh, that's deep. That's deep. Because we're saying that we're not going to bow down to the man of perdition. That's it, God. So if you know so sooner or later you go die, what are you going to do between now and then? Oh, that's deep. That's deep. You have to make up your mind, you know. If you say you're not going to bow, and I know the thing said, when, when man, when man hungry, <laughs> I know the thing said, I know the thing said, we say anything now, including myself. I don't even know I'm going to work. I, I would approach it at that time. Okay. But since, since we said we're not going to bow to the system, but I honestly believe that we're caught up in the web already. That's my greatest concern, you know. My greatest concern, there's a possibility that we get caught up, including the speaker, into this web. Because everything is deception. So there's a possibility that we bow down to the beast and not even realize. There's a possibility. It said, it caused it all to receive a mark in their right hand and in their foreheads. Glory to God. Do you see any mark in my hand? But here it is now. But when I go to the ATM machine, do it, don't I have a mark in my hand? Oh, glory, that's deep. That's deep. Because what I have is a chip. There's a chip that I'm using to deposit and receive money. Okay, now. Okay, now. Let, let, let's, 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 let's lift up the thing now. So if there's a chip, glory to God, in my, I got I go debit card deliberately. Because I have children. I cannot deal with the credit card with children. Children, but we have just having the right look. I, I especially after I preached on, you know, a, a couple of months ago, I preached and I said, children, ask the parents to give you money so you can have tithes and offering, yes. My children, they, not, they don't normally listen to me. However, and it's one message I ever remember. What's that message? After I put on the mic, they came to me. Oh, daddy, don't you, don't you remember what you say? If the parents don't give the children money, then I should go to apostle and tell apostle that my father is backslidden. <laughs> <laughs> All right, going somewhere now. Glory to God. I'm going somewhere now. Hallelujah. Here it is now. I have a debit card. And there's a chip in it. And I'm concerned that maybe the, the spiritual man already caught up in the web without realizing. Look at the thing set now. We're an animal farm, you know. So they have to have control. They have to know where we are. And they want to make sure whatever we do, they have control over it. So last week now, glory, hear this now. Look how the thing set. How the thing setting up. You might not realize how powerful these people put in a system in place. That have to pray to that God intervene. Last week after I off and puff and blow on the house and minister, I took up my family. And we went to a place on Constant Spring Road in the islands to, to treat my family. Glory to God. And my, my family look at the uh, look at the, the list. 
look at the, the menu board and order the biggest of the biggest. Uh, of course, enjoy yourself. What do you mean? What do you mean? Glory to God. And then it was time to pay. Glory to God. And I walked up like a, like a dignified, fully equipped resource man. Draw my card with, with style. And said, my, my, my daughter, use that. Glory to God. The lady, the lady run the thing one time. Look at me, don't want to embarrass me. He says, sir, um, can I run it again? I said, of course, man. Run it a second time. Oh, she, she don't want to look too bad. You know, she says, sir, maybe you need to try another one. Uh, then I pick up the rakes. Did anyone talk? Embarrass I. Okay, now. I'm going somewhere now. I said, okay, now. I need to check this thing. I need to check the system. Thank God that the bank card I was using, there's a, there's a bank close by. So I, I, I take up my, my family and do exercise. They don't know where I'm going, but they have to work with me. Because if, if such food they're going to eat, they have to walk for it and exercise for it. Mm -hmm. So I went to the bank. Bam! It worked. Bam! It worked. Okay, now. Come back. Purchase. I said, okay, now. Let me, let, me, let me check something. I went by the gas station. Pull out the same card. Bam! Somebody here was at the church. Somebody church is at that station. Uh, you know, in fact, he was so excited to see me. And I said, you know something? Let me suffer some embarrassment in front of somebody. So I give the card. And he was excited to draw the card. Bam! Draw the card. Nothing. Money's on the card, you know. Nothing at the, the gas station. And I, I, I just limit the embarrassment. I just take out cash and say, hold that. All right. What's the point I'm making? It's like on me preaching now. I'm licking left, right, and center. The way the thing's set, you know, the same as the enemy of the state. That means uh, my card could load till die king and come. Anytime we go to CD, whatever. Hi! <laughs> Robakasata. Let me ever buy a Bible with it, no? Rakasata. And you see what happened? They're going to block that transaction. Oh, <laughs> glory to God. <laughs> They're going to... God allow me to recognize that all of this thing is control. The Bible says you have to have a number. You have to have a number. So can you imagine now? Glory to God. Me have to walk all the way from down half a tree to go home because there's no gas. Huh? And can you imagine? The, gas, the, the, the manager comes out and says, Mr. Christian, well, you know the thing said. You preach it. You know the thing said. You know that if you don't bow down to the beast and take a mark, then you can't get no gas. And see so you to your children that you cannot walk. And he's a big preacher, man. You just have to you have to make the thing work. Sooner or later, that's where the thing going. Sooner or later, that's why somebody asks in you for a number. <laughs> okay, now, let me throw this into the mix. Oh, we're too God. All right, I won't go too long. Let me show God. Look, look how God is preparing me. I went to a certain institution, financial institution on Mullins, no, on Constant Spring Road down the bottom to pay some school fee. When I went there, about two teller, three teller, two teller and one like a supervisor. It took me how many hours to get through. I'm going somewhere now. Rakasata. So I recognize all the things said. I went to another bank. Opa. Oh, Father. When I went to that bank, I recognize all the things said. People are frustrating you. They want to make sure you go online. Okay. In a certain country, not the one you know, when they were, when they were turning over to this online thing, oh, Father, these were the experiences. In that country in Asia, they're about, they make sure that there wasn't enough money in the ATM machine. Because it's a thing called adoption. We are to be forced to go online. All right, you better go online. Look up online now. You better have Jesus. All right now. Glory to God. That's how they do it down there. So is there any coincidence why sometimes you go to X and don't because the thing is set that way? It's called adoption. And as soon as you have about 30% adoption, the goose cook. Glory to God. So me now, glory to God, went to another bank to change my card. Because I upgraded the card. When I went there, I hear a man through us and said, how did, when the bank going to deal with the money that I lost in my account? Oh, Jesus. The, 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 uh, sorry for the customer service person. Biting up her lip. Looking at the, the, looking, at the, looking at the computer. 
Let the computer need to talk back to her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. So that is at a certain bank I went. A couple days after, I went to another bank to mind my own business. And I heard a lady, a lady heard a woman, a man furious. I said, me don't understand. You want me to put money in this account? Oh, Father. And, 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 and the money keep coming out. That's a two situation, you know. And then I went somewhere, minding my own business. Look how God is preparing me for this message. Mind my own business. And somebody saying, they have eggs and the money disappear, nobody now, whatever. What is happening, brothers and sisters in the Lord? <laughs> hey, you can tell yourself what's happening. Uh, I'm not going to focus on that. Let me close off my message. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Is somebody leaving a suspense? Is somebody leaving a suspense? Two things going to happen. Hallelujah. Yeah, yes. You, they are deliberately allowing things to occur to force adaptation globally. Guys, one playbook. All right. It's not politics, you know. Any side of the pan, as everything said, you have to know how to, you have to decide from day one whether you're going to bow to the system or not. Hallelujah to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, let me close off with this Revelation 13. I read verse 16 already. Let's go verse 17 and 18. And then I bring closure. Verse 17. So that no one will have power to buy or sell unless he bears a stamp, that is, mark or inscription, that is the name of the beast or the number of his name. Verse 17. Verse 18. Here is room for discernment, a call for the wisdom of interpretation. Let anyone who has intelligence, penetration, and insight enough calculate the number of the beast, for it is a human number, the number of a certain man. His number is 666. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, and he caused it all to receive a mark in their right hand and in the foreheads. And the closing scripture said earlier on, and that no man will might buy or sell, save he had a mark. And the name or number of his name. Brothers and sisters, I went on the office of the Prime Minister's website. And on the office of the Prime Minister's website, I came across an NIDS, what they call it, NIDS. And on it is a prototype of the smart card and biometric system. On the, on the website, office of Prime Minister.com, glory to God, it says that the prototype of the smart card and biometric, and it has in it, you go and look. It has fingerprint system. Fingerprint system. And the, the website says it is geared towards citizen to government services. It's government to government services. Government to business services. And government to client services. Look on opm.gov.jm. Glory to God. Now, I know the comment on the website. It is said by the most honorable. It is crucial to advance through the digital transformation by harnessing technology for improved governance, efficiency, and citizen-centric services. It went forward by saying, Oh, Father, they have created what we call a national identification and registration authority as of March 15. This is what the most honorable says. This office is there to carry out a function of the state that, con that continues to regardless of who is in government, I agree, or what the political policies are. And this is about the establishment of protection of the utility of citizens, identify citizens' records, and civil registry within which these are entailed and protected. Someone alluded that over time, this authority will replace the RGD. Now, this authority is chaired by a churchman. And I have the greatest respect. In earlier days, I would have listened to a lot of his messages on TV and cable. Powerful, mighty man of God. He's now a custodian, so I will limit my comment. Because I don't know whether I'll be commenting against the king or the state. Or otherwise, our parliamentary head. So I will limit my comment. Just want to say is that this churchman is now the chairman of an authority that will be making sure... Everyone in this country, log on.
to a number. <laughs> to a number. So if I see a preacher man like me as a chairman and me in a church, I'm going to say everything's okay. It's not so. I believe it's one of the biggest PRO. It's one of the biggest public relation uh, uh, movement. I respect it because look at me the off and puff. But when somebody see that man as a chairman, they go say, sure, Professor Christian, man, I'm just too much learning. Like Paul, man, too much learning. Yeah. So I'm not here to suggest. I'm just here to indicate to you that based on how things are developing, even if the, the present thing is not the mark of the whatever, be informed is a preparation for the full universal flow. How do I know? Because a couple years ago, one man said lockdown, and everybody after lockdown. So when people are telling us that you don't, it's voluntary. It's voluntary. You don't have to have it. <laughs> it's the biggest scam. Hallelujah. Because if you want to go to the hospital, don't you need your number? Don't you need a number? Hmm? If, hear this now. if you want to go to the bank, my bank account, don't you need a number? But we are being told you don't need, you know, it's, 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 what, it's what? Voluntary. Look at the thing set. The Bible said in the last days, how do you know the end times? When there is deception. When there is deception. And here I'm talking to you and I'm closing off. And, and, and some of you, some of you, some of you will, will recognize down the road how much the pricky that we are in. And how the thing set. Oh, Father, in this Whichever country you are in, remember, you know, you have to follow where the money is coming from. So ask yourself now where the money came from to deal with this number thing. And when we check it out, the representative from where the money come from, institute of money come from, said that this, this number thing is a part of the international global connectivity. It's, it's, a, it's a part of the global network of what? Connectivity. Which means, say, if you go down a moko, <laughs> you better have a number. If you went up Wapachuku, you better have a number. Because the thing is set that way. So, brothers and sisters, we don't have to pay ourselves to say, okay, now, how are we going to respond when he knocks on our door? I come to you to say, whenever we see or hear these things, the Bible says we should look up. Oh, glory to God. Look up because our redemption draw at night. Give God praise. Give God worship. <laughs>